Alright, so what is up guys, it's Zuru here, and today I have for you a rather late, but uh, regardless, a uh, deck profile for uh, Risers, the one of the, uh, oops, one of the, uh, huh, one of the new Legion decks from set 18? 18, the, the first Legion set, uh, uh, right, as of right now, it is the next, it is a, a day into June, it was like June second, or well, regardless, it is a day into set, uh, set 19. Uh, so it is like, a, like basically a whole month late, but uh, this was the deck that I used for like uh, for like quite a bit for my uh, during my climb during uh, Thanksgiving season for the invite. Uh, so I think this deck was honestly one of the better decks that was one, one of the better decks to climb during that season because the deck just it just ended games fast because uh, 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 seeker games take forever. Well, seekers are the better deck, but uh, mirrors are not fun to play and. Mirrors that take you know, 20 years to end are all very not fun to play, so I did try my hardest to stay with playing Seekers as much as possible because I don't want to play Mirrors, so this is one of the decks I ended up pivoting to. So, uh, yeah, so uh, without further ado, this is the list. Uh, Alright, so uh, we'll go over everything, explain why I play cards in certain ratios, all that good stuff. So, first off, PG. Uh, I, I, I'm just playing this one. I have played with the old PG as well. Uh, this and the Blob PG are basically the same thing. I just don't own a place that lobby, so I can't afford these in, but uh, which, which the PG you play really doesn't matter. You can play this one, you can play the old PG, it's just kind of down to preference. I just end up swapping back to the old PG because sometimes the old PGs could screw you over, but sometimes they can actually win your games too, so it is all down to preference. Uh, next up, uh, the four of the Screaming Shout Announcer. Uh, so, you know what he does? He's the Gojo clone, or whatever you want to call it, or the Lee In clone, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Vanguard rear, usually rear, sometimes Vanguard. Uh, usually, if you go first and you ride it, you might use the skill here, but a skill is that rest itself, discard a card to draw a card, and the last line just says, if you have no cards in hand, you cannot use its effect, because uh, it requires you to drop the card before drawing the card. So yeah. uh, helps you filter your hand out, uh, out, filter out grade threes and other stuff from your hand to drop the dry to get better cards. Helps you set up drop the legion. It's just good. Uh, on, I think like every any deck that can play a card like this, that that is a Legion deck, will play these at some amount, as long as it doesn't actively hinder the deck in some way. Like for example, uh, you just say uh, Revengers because uh, the uh, th their copy isn't a Revenger, so you can't stack it off, so you, they won't play. But something like Witches will play because their copy is on name. So yeah, you know, Risers really actually don't care for Riser name, so. You can definitely get away with playing this card, and I think this card is uh, very good and honestly probably like a mandatory for him. Next up, the three energy chargers, so uh, radar circle on play, so plus two to draw a card. Again, uh, it draws always nice, just uh, just a free, just basically a free draw one. Let's you, let's you use your soul, and since you're soul blessing two, you also put two cards into your drop zone instead of legion. It's just good. And th these cards are just good, very good in, le in legion format. Uh, if the shout, like the tap self the filter and like the soul blast to draw card these are just very good cards to play in your format so that's why I play four of these and three of these. Don't play four of these because you really don't you'll never resolve four and with three you'll always basically see winning games so yeah. And lastly uh the, the the flex spots for this deck is the jet riser so uh this skill this card is basically like the, like the BCD blank marsh but if you don't know what that does the skill is uh when the attack that he boosted hits you can see we want to put it into soul to stay in one of your riser rears. So you can do uh Cool multi attacks with this. Uh, usually, what this card is ends up being good for is when your opponent's at four and they don't have double intercept. Because a lot of times during the situation, uh, if you're using, if you're going to use this card, you're not, you're going to be on the uh, mega flare that has a crit. So a lot of times, what happen is you go uh, rear into the into the one intercept unboosted. Then you go vanguard, the vanguard check for a crit. Uh, give you give triggers to the thing that's already rested, and then you swing the other lane and boost it by this thing to stand the other side. So you can get like a double PG check at four passing intercept. So it's you can do cool things like that. But another good thing with this card is that it goes into soul, so that uh, it makes uh, more copies of your energy charges live uh, without having to rewrite. So yeah, this cool flex spot. You can play whatever you want here. Uh, uh, one thing I do want to mention though is the reason I don't play the tank riser is because that card, although I think it is very good, the problem with that card is if you can't establish one on both one on both of your rear circles to deny intercepts on on both of your rears, it just doesn't do enough. Sometimes uh, re preventing retire from one side could be enough, but I feel like uh, Tank Roger is best if you fully commit to the card and play it at four. And 
To play a tank crafter at 4 means I need to cut on copies of the energy charger and the shell, which I think is more important to play at higher copies of. So that's what that's why I personally do not play any tank crafters. Uh, if you think one, just having one on the board is fine, you can definitely uh, cut these two cards for tank risers, uh, it's like the riser tank attacker, I think, and there's like, I'm sure, I'm sure there are other cards here that you can play that you don't have to jet riser, but I think this, this is what works best for me, so, uh, that this is what I'm playing. These two slots can definitely be whatever you want it to be. Next off for the grade 2, we are playing for the trans riser, so, his skill is, uh, Vanguard Beer, on place, check top card of your deck, if it's a grade 2 or lower, call it, if not, uh, put it back and shuffle your deck. He's been here since that's one. Uh, he being Riser name is just a coincidence, but you don't even care that it's Riser name. You play because this card gets you a free plus one, and uh, Novas really do like the free plus one, so that's, that's why you play for this card. All right, next up, another card that's a free plus one is the Street Bouncer. So his skill is on place. You can rest itself plus one other card to draw a card. So uh, yeah, uh, he he draws you a card if you want to save him for later. You can move him to the back and put a boost behind it later for it to hit later. Or you can leave it, leave it in the front to force your opponent to commit cards, which is a lot of time what you will to be doing on turn two. So, uh, a, a lot of times your best turn two play is like ride a trans rider. Hopefully he hits something. Just assume he hits something. Let's say he hits a booster or something. Uh, you call it, and then you call this dude. You uh, use a skill. You tap itself, and usually the uh, the st oh, I didn't go for starter. I go over that after. It's usually rest the starter, and then you use the starter to uh, search for a grade three. So spoilers this is the grade three searcher. So yeah. Uh, so it basically like he tapped to nothing because he used the starter to put in the soul and then sometimes you play an energy charger after that to get the because you have two cards in the soul now to get the draw on that turn too so uh, very nice like three card combo uh, the, the actual best high roll is when you transform it into a street bouncer street bouncer taps itself in the booster draw card and then you, you use the uh, Mariah to dig for grade 3 so yeah uh, new really cool plays that those are super high early but obviously you just play it out of hand and it still works the same thing so yeah uh, since I forgot what the start up over right now uh, it is the Grade 3 Searcher, so uh, the Mario uh, CB1, put into Soul, checked out 5, added Grade 3 Dan. So uh, playing Mario means you can afford to be greedy and hold no Grade 3s in your opening hand, so to try to dig for better quality cards, i.e. not triggers in your hand. And uh, being able to go into Soul turn 2 is really nice because you can use it, grab a Grade 3 or whatever, or whiff or whatever, uh, if you weren't digging for it, you can sometimes just use it just to get into your Soul. So you can use the energy charger on the t on the on turn two to draw the extra card. So yeah, uh, that's cool center. You just over. I think this is just overall probably the best uh, best uh, starter you can play. Uh, the I think the energy rider, the one that has resist, isn't very good. The battle rider is kind of whatever to be honest. I think this is just better and it helps the consistency of that quite a bit. So I think Ryo is definitely the best group, best starter you can play for this deck. So yeah. Uh, and it also does, lets you do stuff like the Mariah Trans Rather play, but, or more or less plays the uh, Street Bouncer, so yeah. I think it's pretty good, pretty good. Uh, uh, next up, uh, go back to Grade 2, this is the... I don't know what this thing is called, but it, it, is, the, it is the Riser 12k attacker, so during your turn, if your Vanguard is a Riser, he gets plus 3k, and he is also the Legion mate to the uh, Drilling, so that is uh, very important, so yeah. Uh, solo attacker is nice. Uh, it's also just an added bonus that he also happens to be the mate to a card you're gonna play anyway, so you don't, you don't have to make space for like bad bad mates or anything. So yeah, uh, definitely, I think this card is definitely a four of because uh, solo attackers are always nice. You definitely need them, and again, being a mate to a card you're gonna play anyways is just really good. So yeah. and then finally, we're playing two of the uh, the wolf Lair, I think is his name. Uh, but yeah, uh, his skill is uh, once per turn uh, during the turn you legion. Uh, at the end of the battle, or when your vanguard attacks, you CB1 to stand itself and get itself 5k power, so. This card is really good. The problem with this card, and why I'm only playing two copies of it, is because his timing is super awkward. If, it, if, if his skill was just when your vanguard attacks, if it is in Legion CB1 to stand it, this card would be like a guaranteed 4 of. But because this card only procs on the turn you Legion, uh, you basically only have one turn to make use of it. So that's why I don't think it's worth playing more copies of this card. Although on the on the games where you do actually get to use this card, you can do really stupid plays where opponents double intercept at three, and you can just go uh, rear to rear, rear to rear this this thing unboosted, and then Vanguard swings with two crit. Uh, CB one to stand this. He's now 21 with the 7k booster. You hit if they hit no defensive, so he gets to check PG. If he if they hit if you hit one trigger, they need double defensive to not eat shit there. So uh, this card is. Good when it pops off, but it's a little too situation to justify more copies of it. So that's why I only play two of it. And he is also the mate to the uh, 
to the Mega Flare, so you're forced to play some amounts of it. I'm personally, uh, I personally think uh, two is enough copies of the meat to play, so that's why I only play two at this point. Yeah, uh, that's it for the Great Twos. Almost the Great Threes. First off, we have the Mega Flare. So he, again, he legions with the the Dual Flare, and his skill is uh, uh, when it attacks a Vanguard. I'm, I'm fr you wouldn't. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's when attacking a Vanguard, but uh, because the skill is get crit, even if it got drained swinging to a rear, it doesn't matter. So. Uh, I'm pretty sure that when attacking Vanguard, if your Vanguard is in Legion, so if, if he is in Legion, and you have two or more other rested cards, uh, he gets a crit. So, how this works is, uh, although there are two cards, I'm pretty sure it's rested rear. Actually, actually, I actually don't know what the word, what the actual word in this card is. I just know that if you have two other, two like rear guards rested, and he swings, he gets a crit. So, a lot of times, which, uh, you do have to remember that. A lot of times, what you will do is uh, you probably swing at the rear. And then if you need to save the other column to swing something else, and you don't want to swing with it yet because you want to have you just you just uh, boost with the Vanguard booster to uh, get the extra boost condition. So yeah, uh, he gets a crit. Uh, this condition is honestly really annoying. I wish it wasn't here. I wish it was just when attacking a Vanguard. If you were in Legion, he gets a crit, but he decided to slap on this condition for whatever reason. But it honestly doesn't matter most of the time. So it's very situational. It doesn't matter, but uh, just remember to not swing this thing first. Unboost, uh, like boosted or unboosted. Just remember that you have to swing the rear first. Uh, if you're aiming a Vanguard with this, yeah. And his other skill is uh, when he is attacking a Vanguard. If you have another card in the middle column, so this includes the mate. So if you have a, if you if he is in Legion, he will always get the extra plus three K. If he's not in Legion, you have to have a booster behind it to uh, get the plus three K. So yeah. Just uh, nine plus three K. Plus three K to attacking is always good. If you're in Legion, this king is always swinging for 24? 24. Yeah, I can do math. Wait. 23, 23, 23. If he's in Legion, he's swinging for 23 always, so that's pretty good. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, he is definitely, he's your first ride, and he is uh, very good because he's just a big, big scary robot with yellow star, so yeah. Uh, next up, we have the Drill Wing. So his skill, he Legion with 12 attacker, and then his skill is uh, when he attacks the Vanguard, if you are in Legion, you can CV2 to stand two cards in your front row that have a card behind it. So, uh, basically, what the, what this is telling you is, uh, if you don't, if you if you just have a front row and you don't have a back row, you don't stand. So, for example, if your board is like uh, Vanguard in the middle and then you have uh, two rears and only one of them has something behind it, only that call, only that one card will, will stand. The other card will not stand if you have something behind it. So, more often than not, you will have two boosters when you do this. Otherwise, if you're at five, you just need to restand. Sometimes you just slam whatever behind the card just to fill its conditions. Again, this is pretty annoying that it's there, but it shouldn't matter most of the time. So, just look at the CV2 stay in your front row. Just remember that you need something in the back behind him to stand the card to begin with. So yeah. And it has second skill is the same thing as the, the Mega Flares. Um, when attacking Vanguard, if you have something in the middle column, if you have something in the middle column plus 3k, again, uh, if he is in Legion, he will always be swinging for 23. If he's not in Legion, you need something, to, something behind it to get the plus 3k. So yeah. And then finally, we are playing on heal a very surprising card that most people probably wouldn't play. It is the Cosmo Lord. So his skill, if you don't know what he does, is Vanguard Rear, tap, uh, ignore the Vanguard card. You would never want to ride this card. Uh, Vanguard Rear, rest a card, and he gets plus 3k. You do as many times as you want. So the reason. He, this Cosmo Lord, for all intents and purposes, is just a better Yamato no Drake in every single way. It is 11k base, so it can swing solo. You can tap, you can just tap the Vanguard booster to make this thing as big as a Drake. But you can also do really like weird plays where you just like, or really janky plays if you need to, where you just like call a card, tap it, play over, call a card, tap it, just give it power. Sometimes you will actually just tap a bunch of cards have, to have this card be able to swing uh, solo like 16 if you needed to sometimes. So. So stuff like that, that can happen, uh, you could replace this card with Drake, but Drake is honestly just this card, but worse in every single way. If you have these, you play them, absolutely, as your heal. If you don't have them and you want to play a build someone with this one, I guess you just play Drakes here. But I will say, uh, the Cosmo Lords are, will definitely impress you about how, how good they are. They're, I've definitely won a lot of games where uh, Cosmo Lord will, specifically is the only rear that would have won me the game, where uh, Drake would definitely have fallen flat. And uh, the upside to this guy is that, uh, is that uh, you also do not need to restand it for it to get power. You just always get power. So sometimes your opponent has like no intercepts, and you're trying to end the game. You can go uh, whatever on one rear column, or, or rather you tap the Vanguard booster while you're on uh, something like Mega Flare. You swing the other column, push them to five. If they check a defensive, 
you don't have to swing Vanguard first. You can swing Rear first because Cosmo Lord plus any 7k booster is 21, so you can check so that checks for a PG first, and then you can swing Vanguard second in. Uh, that's something Drake just cannot do because Drake cannot get powerless and stands himself, and if you're on something like Megaphoid, you cannot you cannot stand the Drake, so. Uh, yeah, so just that's just another scenario where the Drake can be more, or the Cosmo Lord can be more flexible than the Drake. And then finally, the 1 of slot, it is. It can be whatever you want it to be. I personally just chose to play the Immortal Ass Man because I think he is just a uh, pretty good. He's like a he's like a pseudo fifth finisher. So his skill is limited four. What's the turn? You check a grade three or samurai. Samurai don't exist in this deck. So when you check a grade three, he gets the skill uh, as an unbothered attack. CB two discard two cards. Stand itself and a rear. He gets 10k draw two cards and cross try with OG Ass Man. You're not playing that card. So this card is just like a pseudo fifth copy of uh, this card. Of the uh, drill of the drilling, it, it, it nets you the same amount of extra attacks, assuming you check the trigger. So yeah, uh, that's why I play this one as a one of. Uh, this can be whatever you want it to be. You can play like a, you can play a Drake here if you want, just like a fifth copy of Cosmo Lord. You can play something like uh, uh, Perfect Riser. You can play OG Ass Man. I just think Immortal Ass Man was uh, the best pick here, and he has actually won me games before, so it's not like he's terrible or anything. Uh, I guess I'll go over one more thing. Why I'm not playing the Perfect Riser. Uh, Perfect per Riser just requires too many resources. It, like, this deck can plus and stuff, but uh, you don't have enough resources to actually want to suck two cards in to get the crit. Uh, yeah, it's mainly just that. Yeah, him creating the Bower is pretty cool and all, but uh, that doesn't make up for uh, sucking two extra cards. He also, also by playing the Perfect, Perfect Riser, it means that you cannot play cards like Shout because if you ride it, that's an extra card you have to put in. And because he checks soul for the crit, you basically cannot use energy charger because energy charger soul blasts two cards out. So you have to put an extra two cards in. So uh, he just conflicts with too much with cards that are actually good you want to play. Like by playing, if you play perfect rider, you can you basically can't play shout and you can't play energy charger at uh, high counts. You basically have to play like a full riser grade one line one use of uh, perfect rider. So yeah, that's why I don't play it. So yeah. Uh, this is the list. This list I have climbed with. I think this list is really good. I implore you to definitely give it a try. I definitely think it's better than all the random ass, like, pure riser lists where you're playing jank with battle. You're playing garbage with battle riser. You're playing uh, perfect risers and stuff. You're playing, like, the shitty rare leanings for names, even though you don't, you don't actually need it. So, yeah. Definitely think this is, uh, honestly, I do think this is the, the best way you can build a riser. I can't, I can actually hardly call this deck a riser. It is a more or less just a good. Good stuff, Nova's list is also awesome what this is. Just happens to have risers as your bosses, so yeah. Uh, the game plan of the deck, if you can do it, is uh, ride the Mega Flare first, script on the five, and then re ride Drill Wing, tri triple check PGs, try anything like that, so yeah. And uh, after this, I will have games for you guys, as per usual. Uh, like, subscribe, all the good stuff, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.